Good afternoon from New York City to all our viewers in North America, Europe, Romania, and anywhere in the world. Thank you for coming at the new edition of the Ferraro Conferences, one of our, our online permanent programs named after the founder of professional Romanian cultural diplomacy in the United States. Our guest today is fair and square legendary. As a young man living in the harshest period of communist Romania, he became a pariah because he dared to speak out his mind in favor of more freedom and justice. He was eventually forced to leave the country only to become a powerhouse of international opera and international cultural scene, a mentor to some of the world's best known opera superstars who have graced the lyrical stage for many decades. Charismatic, visionary, and sometimes a bit abrasive, he presided over the reinvention and relaunch of some of the most important cultural organizations in Europe, Staatsoper Wien, Vienna Opera, the famous Opera House, and George Enescu International Festival. As young director of the Romanian Cultural Institute in Warsaw, Poland, some many years ago, also coming from beloved uh, Timisoara, I would often turn to his books and interviews only to learn from the best. Maestro Johan Hollander, it's an honor to have you in the program. It's a pleasure for me to see the part of New York and to speak <coughs> directly between Vienna <coughs> and New York, really. Yeah. It's a pleasure to have you in the program. I would start by uh, talking about a place that is uh, very important to you, Timisoara, a um, major city in Western Romania, is not only a place, a geographical place, but also a spirit. You often talk about how important the city, this city was in your formation. Can a city form a man's character? Look, I was born in Timisoara 35, as a 1935, and in 1959, I was there till I was 24 years. Wherever in the world you are living the first 24 years, especially the time between the, let's say, 13 and 23, you are formed and the town or the village or the capital, wherever you are, has an influence uh, of you. And you must know, so we have to remember that really all my life was there in Sistimishwara. The possibility it is today not so easy to believe this or to imagine this, but no travel was possible to do. You, do, you couldn't go somewhere, uh, it, not speaking about somewhere out of Romania, but in this period, especially after 47, 48, although I had 13 years, you couldn't travel not even in Romania without having something to do. I never saw the real cultural capital from Romania, Yash. Yash is... 400 kilometers from Timisoara, and you cannot travel because the granite on the, the border, border from, from Timisoara. It was a police, milice, yeah. we said that. You, you couldn't get out of the city, you only no, to go to... Where you go. You mm. have to go somewhere. I was once in my life then in Bucharest, through going away and leaving Romania, I was in Bucharest. As a, I had to do that something. So Timisoara was old. I didn't suffer for this, not at all. I didn't have the nostalgia to see Paris or Roma or something on New York. No, New York was the enemy and the, uh, the bad capitalist uh, <laughs> the world. Yes. This was the education what we had. Uh, Timisoara was my life. 
En de kathedraal van Timisoara, de orthodox kathedraal in de middel of the town, in New Cathedral, which was uh, opened in 1947, still from the king in the last year, when the king was a king in Romania. Yeah. Before and, they abdicated, yeah. Yeah. And the theater, uh, the opera, the opera de Stadt. I don't recognize the name till today. I cannot imagine now why it was opera de Stadt and not uh, Teatro Comunal, I don't know how we say in English. Uh, the community theater uh, would be. The municipal theater, we said. Yeah, Big municipal they did theater, the sport theater, and song theater, and opera theater. This dominated the town. Mm -hmm. So it was the most- Good For those who don't know, they are located right in the very center of the city, and they form a square between them. It is where it is. It is, I let, you must see it. You must see <laughs> it. Do you find it? It was, and it is for me, the most beautiful house from the world, this would never change. So it looks, please, for New York, it is mm. most, much more, much more beautiful as a metropolitan. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a really art to see. Okay, but um, <laughs> uh, you, as a, to, to finish my answer to your question, the synagogue. The synagogues, there are three synagogues in Timisoara, but the synagogue in the, in the center of Timisoara, not far from the opera, mm -hmm. was, the, was the most beautiful and big synagogue from the world. And we spoke all automatically three languages, uh, German, Hungarian, and Romanian. And in the communist um, period, they opened also a permanent theater in German and in Hungarian language. I must say now, some people in America wouldn't like this, not all what they did in the cultural direction in the communist period was bad. There was also a lot of very good things, but this is another subject. Uh, but finally, where you, the city where you live, your use period, is anytime very important. Mm -hmm. It is Timisoara Ma. I wrote also this book about my Timisoara. And now, in this uh, situation of age, in what I am now, of course, the roots get stronger when the trees get higher. Mm -hmm. And I am the tree, and Timisoara are the roots. Mm -hmm. It's still, it's, still, it's still so important to you. But dwelling a little bit more on Timisoara, you have often remarked that your time as a spectator as the, at the opera, even as an extra in some of the shows, was very important, even decisive in many respects, for your formation. And it has always puzzled me how come that respectable but a provincial opera house in the midst of a harsh Stalinist dictatorship could become the training ground for one of the most successful opera managers in the world. What was so admirable in the Timisoara opera that deserved to be emulated later in your career? Yeah, uh, so once more in for your question, the Stalinist dictator didn't have a bad influence of the culture. Yes, okay instead of Madame Butterfly, because we shouldn't use English words in this period. Today, you cannot use Russian words for the war in Ukraine, and they happen a lot of idiotic things in this direction. But uh, culturally, the theater was first a curiosity, what happens in this building? It's normal, you see it, you admire it, but you have no idea what is there inside. And also through, through my father, I was introduced or he went with me and I was not so young, I was 14. 14 mm. is not too young for this. The first time to see an, a performance there. And I was captured without understanding very well what happens, but it was Traviata von Verdi 
but all the singing, the music, the, yeah, I was fascinated and I wanted to go again. So I get very quickly, very interested, and it was the most important for me to go to performances. In opera, in song performances, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday it was opera, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and okay. concomitant Sunday, once opera, once year. Oh, okay. The dominant thing, and I am, I think I would never know what I know, and uh, for my future activity in Vienna and in Metropolitan, where I worked five years as uh, artistic advisor, and in Berlin and in Tokyo and in so wherever I was. <laughs> or the big opera houses in the world. <laughs> uh, also in Budapest. But it's not so important. The important is there they sung all in a language what they understood, the singers understood it. It was Romanian. And I understood it. And so it was in all the world. In all the world, it was sung in another language. Not, of course, not in New York. In New York, in the old metropolitan, they sung all in Italian. They sung Wagner in Italian. Because the Americans, opera was Italia. So, the Italian, yeah, and Caruso and Gigli and all these big Italian singers uh, sung more on the metropolitan in their own country. So, it was all sung in Romania and it had automatically a very present and a very real background because the, I repeat, the singers know what they sing. Mm -hmm. when, the, when the tenor in the poem sang, Cerece Manusica, and permitted song Kerzes, we know all. You sing it in Italian, Che Geri da Manina, Milonascia Riscaldar. You hear it, but you don't understand it. And in the Russia, not and in French, not. In all this period, it was all sung in Romania. Now it changed, it's all. In all the world, they sing in the language in which it was composed. This is another story. But it was determinant for me uh, that I understood it. Mm -hmm. And of course, the small house where you understand the words and you see the singers, they have a lot of big advantages. And it was a very big repertoire. Of course, a lot of consequence from the period. You say Stalinist period. I don't like this word because Stalin died 52 and, and the period continued a lot of years. It was a communist period in Romania mm -hmm. where, uh, first of all, in the first years, we, they tried to be very near to the Soviet Union. Because and the country was also occupied by the Soviet troops at the time. time. And then they went away. But, and yeah. Romania was anytime very interested to be as far as possible from the Soviet Union. And I remember in this now, we don't want to make a political discussion, but let's say this, when they even in Praga was from the countries, from the Comintern, yeah. yeah. Romania, from, lead from Ceausescu in the Communist Party didn't went in the Czechoslovakia against the wish of Soviet Union. So it was a little different from the other countries as possible it was. And also in the artistic realm, if they had these standards at the opera and in the artistic standards, because you often speak about how high the standards were, how well the singers sang, the music, the instruments, Hello, the direction. This was my fascination. I say it now, I put it a little relatively. I was never more impressed in my life from the singer from Canio in Pagliacci, perhaps I know Ridi Pagliacci, it is very known in the world of opera, as from Garbis Zobian, the Armenian, the singer, but the Romanian with Armenian roots, who sang this in Timisoara. Nobody in the world till Pavarotti, Domingo, I don't know who, who was so, had such a big voice and such a presence as this Garbis Zobian. I tell you now, with 87 years. 
if it is really so, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, a lot of things, you know, all what you read uh, in this age, no? I read Tolstoy, Levsky was so present and we were so fascinated from this. And of course, from the singers from this opera. Oh my God, then I tried to sing also. I cried more as I sang, but I saw <laughs> it. And the highest now, I make a little uh, salto, salto, uh, wants, to, wants to be on this stage. My God. And then I arrived on this stage as a, what do you say in English? An extra, yeah. A sing for those. That's right, yeah. And uh, I was one of the Ethiopian clubs, clubs? slaves mm -hmm. in Aida, and I was very proud of it. And finally, I learned with singing. I left the country with 24 years, mm -hmm. very sad, very depressed. I left in Vienna. I was nothing. I lost all. I lost what I wanted to get. I wanted to be an engineer from, how you say, uh, material ruland, from uh, engineer the mat ruland material, also from locomotives. Yeah. Uh, uh, stream. Yeah, I was eliminated from the university. Yeah, no, you were expelled in 1956 because you spoke in front of a gathering of students that were demanding yeah. better, better treatment, better conditions. And it was right during the anti-communist yes. Hungarian revolution of 1956 that reverberated in Romania. But you are so courage, courageous to speak in front of this crowd. And of course, it was never forgiven. And that's why you were expelled and made a pariah in your own country. You say I was never, I was, I was courageous a lot. Yeah, I yeah, I think you were. I think you were. Already said how stupid you can be to speak. <laughs> so, <laughs> it happened uh, 57. It happened that I was eliminated from all the high schools from the country. And with this, my life was finished because you must imagine uh, the people who, which look to us, I repeat it, the world was a country. The world was a city first. Mm -hmm. That was a country. Say too, probably, uh, this is all, not more. But it was very well organized. I organized. When I was in the third year, as a, in the fifth semester in the high school, and there it was the Soviet system, which is not bad. After any semester, you had to uh, to make positively, the, to finish positively with examination the semester. You couldn't be in the third year and you have to make some uh, examines from the first year. I am understandable. Yeah, that's right. And if you finish, then you get somewhere in the country, a Lok de Munke, a place yeah. to work yeah. with a salary. So you can live with a pension and you get enough to live. So you had no problems. You had only to learn to finish the university. For the rest of the state, is, and they don't admit more students as they need. So it was not a situation from here that we make too many doctors or too many engineers or whatever. We produce uh, in the planification exactly the number of workers what the state need. The state is the world. So I was out, I was finished. And yeah. how and I was... Because the state controlled everything because you were expelled. No, nobody would hire you. And you had to, to leave by giving tennis lessons. For... It came then. Yeah. Yeah, after it. Yeah, yeah. But they said, yeah, but I was considered a Dushman al Popolui. An enemy of the state. Enemy of the state. Or uh, the people. Enemy of the people. And you had a fishery card there, yeah? so you had a paper, and with paper you went where, or wherever you wanted to get it. That file followed you everywhere, and when they realized that, oh my God, we cannot touch this guy. We gotta <laughs> gotta re get rid of it. Yes, uh, finally, or is it so? Yes, I played quite well tennis, and I was then a tennis trainer, a paid tennis trainer with a monthly salary, three months, and then they told me. I'm very sorry, but you cannot teach young people. 
with your past. And I was out. And I was till I went away as a T-59, then only by, by a general, by the army. Because I, I teach the soldiers from this division. But I played only with the general. He liked me. He kept me. And this is also the communist regime. All body is eager. Not all body is eager. No, no. He, could, he could em employ you, even though yeah. you are not, uh, not em employable. But, uh, but I uh, went I, away. I, went, I, I didn't have any other possibility to survive. I didn't went away from Romania or from Timisoara with pleasure. Yeah, willingly. Really. That's right. Very depressed and not at all happy because I was a destroyed existence. I didn't know anything more. Yeah. And I couldn't continue with the study. And the German, I spoke German, but all these technical things, I didn't know them. And in the university, I would say what was. I didn't understand it. And so I arrived once more in my life to the Opfer Stats of Vienna, where they have see, about 600 standing places, which are very uh, big, cheap. And I continued my love and my nearness to the Oper. But it, you, and you had a career for a couple of years as a singer in uh, several operas in the German speaking world. Several, uh, several, you, not several, and career. If career in English means carriera in Romanians, and I didn't have a career, I had an exit. Very important. No, I, they admitted me with 26 years in the Conservatory of Music in Vienna, which was not expected. And I received a little bursa uh, box. A stipend or a scholarship. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I it was about, you can say, $50, something like this. And I thought, I said to me, if these ugly capitalists are giving me money, this means that I am something. Because <laughs> they give the money and they want to take They, uh, they the invested money. well, Myers. They knew where to invest this money. It was a big return on this investment, I might say. <laughs> It was a return because I had then a fixed position in a town, Klagenfurt, in, in Austria, mm -hmm. where I sung a lot of parts. And what is more important in my life, I returned to Timisoara seven years after I left the town as singer. And I sung Traviata and um, um, Carmen in Timisoara. Mm -hmm. And one year after, somehow it get difficult with uh, an engagement in the Occident. No? Yeah, in the West. Yeah. And, and I finished with singing. Yeah. And then I was came since 22 years of manager. Yeah. Of manager. That's... I cannot, but I must explain a little this is manager in America because it is very different from what it is in America. I was a representative, uh, like a promoter, like an agent, opera agent, agent uh, yeah, impresario. But, yeah, but not with exclusive artists. I did. I worked with, uh, let's say, with Placido Domingo, which is to, today in said apparition as baritone. Then it was a very important tenor. tenor. I, I worked with him uh, starting when he was absolute unknown and absolute unimportant. He was. <laughs> Nothing. Oh <laughs> my God. <laughs> I had the impression that it gets important. I had this unimportant point. and Placido Domingo in the first set in the same sentence looks very unusual. <laughs> Nobody is born there where they get to be. That's right. And it was very successful, but the changing from singer to this. Uh, in German, you have a very good word for it. And I consider that, that it was to promote the relation, to put together artists mm -hmm. and uh, opera managements and, and productions with the right singers. That's what you do. Do they look about it, Oscar? And yeah, I need a character, and you would offer some choices for them to choose. Yeah. And when I'm springing years, when they took me 
and paid me in the Metropolitan in this direction from Peter Gale, which is now, it was also to recommend them new singers. They know your biography very well. I did my homework well, and not recently, a long time ago. But I like to ask you about this overlap between your career in promoting or mediating between the productions and the, the artists. How important was it for you to have had a back, an artistic background, to have been a singer before? How important was it? Well, it was not important. It was, uh, as a result, this you couldn't, it, you cannot work in this. It is essential. It is, up, it is, it is like an essential condition to be. Yeah. Uh, you must know the literature very well. Or it is not so big because there are about 400 operas, but about 40 or 45 or yeah. any time plays. It is not good, this situation that they play any times the same, but these 45 or 50 are essential. And till the, till the 60th years, it was absolute normal that the CAO, you say today, the general manager mm -hmm. from a cultural institution, from an opera, is a conductor. Is the, of its Carayano, it is wow. Toscanini. Wow. Or Mahler before. You know. Mahler before. Richard Strauss, composer, as a musicians which are knowing the music, or singers, singers which are not singing, mm -hmm. or and the most uh, successful manager in the, metro in the history of the Metropolitan was Rudolf Wink from Vienna, who was a manager before. So he did exactly the work what I had did in this period. This you have to know. And if you was a singer, you know the psychology from the singer, which is also not important, very important. I, you know how to deal with the tantrums, how to deal with the diva, how to deal with the crisis. Mm -hmm. There is sometimes visit the opera world better yeah. than others. <laughs> Languages, I think, was are very important because you have to, you are nearer to somebody if you speak in his language. The language. Yeah. Nobody is all English, nobody is speaking somehow English. I very bad, but somehow I speak it. And probably I have something what you cannot learn, but you can have or you don't have it is an instinct. Yeah. It's an instinct. So instinct is important. And then it gets legendary. You don't need so much to be a legend. We said some singers, you get it very quickly. And I knew very well the Romanian uh, territory. I, it was a tenor Ludovic's piece from mm -hmm. uh, Romania, which I get to auditions out. Nobody knows him, who he is, Romanian. I, Romanian, Oscar singers. Yes, there are a lot. So, some important opera houses, Esturi, Stuttgart, Berlin, they ask me about new singers and cheap singers. Because the Romanian singers are yeah, were, uh, commanding lesser fees. It's so slowly it gets what it get. It, it developed to what it was. How was how was the most important? Looking back at your your long tenure as the general manager of Vienna and a very considered a very successful one because a lot of a lot of new things were were brought in and new ways of of, of promoting promoting the productions and working with the singers. So looking back to this almost twenty years at the helm of the Vienna Opera, what do you think were the most was the most important skill that you had in order to be able to, to preside over this reinvention, to lead this, the, this important old opera into a new age, into a new strings of success. What do you think was the most important during these times, things that were crucial in making it happen? As I was 19 years, 19, yeah. um, so it took me because yeah, it was very known, my activity and my importance as agent, let's yeah. say that made it so. And the, and the director of Echter, who gets his direction, made me this offer, let the agency come in the opera. I, I let the agency, oh, oh, I, uh, Christy Gart, I, I won. 
much more money as agent as <laughs> as general manager. But, okay, and so I started this with him together. He died then in a very short time. Uh, I was a general secretary, and then I guess a director. You say in in, in yeah. Europe, intendant. Mm -hmm. As though I don't know in English, but not even a director. You can say manager. Uh, the main general manager. I would uh, translate it the or manager, you know, is the word for the industry and for the technique. I think the intendant is a more artistic word. However, to answer your question, what was the most important? Without any doubt, the most important thing what I did was that I opened on the roof of the house for between six and ten years to, to find the works for them, the stories, the composition, the music, and the artist first for the adequate years, any time six to ten, six to eleven. And this was the first in Europe, and I don't know in America if it is now or not, but in, the, in any case in Europe, I was the first one where I did an opera for children, opera pentru copy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in, in uh, very near to Zoom in Vienna, we have once in a year a very known but very unimportant uh, manifestation the ball of the opera, open ball. Yeah, a famous, the famous ball. <laughs> no, everybody's yeah. dying to get into this ball. Everybody's fighting to get a, a, ticket, a ticket to it. I fight a, a lot of time without success to put it, to throw it out from the house. <laughs> so in a house, you have to make balls, and this ball which you have to get out all the chairs from the house and mm. the transformation from the house. And it, it, it is one new production less for this ball of the opera. And they told me, yeah, but with this, you make a lot of money. So if we want to make money in this house, then we can do a lot of other things. Then we can make tennis championships or I don't know what. <laughs> we need to make art and make money. But say in America, of course, it is something very important. And I heard now that in a hotel, Walter Pastore, I don't know where in New York, say to the Vienna Open Ball, also in New York. It's a very popular event of the, the cultural calendar and social calendar year. So people are often fighting to get, and it's very, quite expensive. So you see, it's not only in Vienna, it's exported over, all over the world. I never, I never put a, uh, picture, a, a, a food there after I'm away, <laughs> it's so hard. but if this wasn't you know, any time it's Thursday, then we close the house also Friday, mm -hmm. and we let it in the same art with our chairs and all out, so 3,500 people can go in, and we make the it's our pretty for children mm -hmm. uh, two performances the next day. And this is the open bar for kinder with the tower flute where 7,000 children go to this magic flute, mm -hmm. uh, magic flute reduced of one hour for children. This remains mm -hmm. till now, till today, uh, in a form that they understand it and they are in the big house. To finish once more and to make it short, your answer, this was the most important thing, the opera for children. What about you as a general manager, as a leader of the organization? What was more important for you during this time of change when you implemented a lot of change? Was it your energy, is your wide net of connections? Was it your even your toughness, even your vision? Vision? What was what do you think was most important for you? that helped you move things further as a, a cultural leader? It is the most, the most description from this population is they want changes, but all should remain as yes. it was. <laughs> so, and now it comes here a Romanian, a nobody, an unknown, a Romanian Jew, perhaps, or I don't know. <laughs> what. This is the worst what exists. And next is changes. Here it was Karayan and Kiev Italy. So here was Mara and I don't know who. 
Uh, this was the most difficult. And of course, I brought Donizetti and Bellini, which they never played. I brought Congold, the, a very important composer, which he had to go away 38 because Jewish and American very known and very important. The repertoire changed. I bought a lot of Russian uh, works and I had three years all the Wagner operas in repertoire. There was these changes uh, and a lot of others not so important. I understood that I must do it here for the public. Without public the story dies. Why do you do it? As a, and the selling of tickets, but this is dangerous if I say only this, because this means that you do only Magic Fruit and Traviata and the Tosca. Yeah, right. mm. uh, you have to make them curious. And they pay it. This is now very different from the United States. In the United States, you don't have a budget. In the United States, you live from the sponsors. The Metropolitan's budget from the city of New York is 1% what they need. So they don't need anything. The general manager from the Metropolitan, with all my respect, Mr. Gale, is not to know what is opera and what are singers. Is is that they have to know how they get money. Who gets the money is a good general manager. So from the sponsors. Then the I find it a very bad situation because, uh, of course, and naturally, you try to do what they like who pay you. And we know what they have and a lot of things. He made a new production of Tosca in a very modern way in the Metropolitan, with a very important stage director from Paris. And, but it was modern, it was different without going now in details. And the lady, and the general ladies, and not young ladies, the sponsors, because they have time for this, uh, and they give some money. And she told, no, as a, this new Tosca, I don't want more. Then I don't pay. And then he put also the old Tosca production to be in a good relation in continuation oh, with this lady. Mm -hmm. As of this situation in America. In Europe, people which live there impose it, uh, tax payers. From the tax payers, we get a sum as budget. And I was very careful and very attentive to not to spend more as we have. I had also sponsors. If I have them, okay. And in my 19 years, it happened the first time in the history of Vienna that we was invited and paid from America to guest in the Metropolitan Opera. He was with one production there present. This was something, really. And I am, in any case, and I stay it till I am in life, 1869. It was the opening from the Vienna Staff Open. 19 years, nobody registered in this country. <laughs> and uh, also others are far, 16 was a maximum in the 19th century. So I am the longest serving, as you say today, a manager from the Vienna Hotel. And if you ask me why 19 years, it is my fault. It is my mistake. I don't know if it was a mistake, but I find it's okay. So it came the new minister, a lady, and I was by her and we spoke. And then she says, oh, Mr. Hollinger, of course, I was then 70, uh, so 75, I finished. And she says, uh, as a two years before I finished, of course, I think to give you one year Extension of the country. As on a year. And instead of saying thank you very much, my lady, kiss your hand, I say, Prime Minister, if in 19 years I didn't uh, arrive to an uh, honor, I am afraid in one year I wouldn't do it. So it's just a story was finished. <laughs> and, uh, 19 years and it's, and it's okay. So 
Uh, that's why I always said that it's almost 20 years because uh, it was really almost 20 years. But your life has been endless and you have went through, you have gone through many, many experiences throughout this long and eventful, uh, eventful life. Of course, you had extraordinary successes. You were at the peak of the opera world for many years. At the same time, there was, like uh, is always uh, the case, failure. What did you learn from things that weren't that exciting, that didn't work so well, if you learned something from them? Yeah, of course, I had not only successes. And I think is, you remember when you are away the successes and you forget some mistakes <laughs> and not successes. And it is a difference also between I was very, this is also a quality what you should have personally and in looking things and in judging things. So I, if I look in the yeah. mirror. The mirror, then I see me or I look here and I see me now here as I am and not better and not younger and not yes. more as I am. And if I go to a performance which I created it on the end, I am very sincere in judging it in her, this quality and in the sports. And a lot of times it is a very big success for a not very good performance and for a not good singers. Not so important. My judgment is important because mm -hmm. my judgment is a real and sincere judgment. And sometimes I told me, my God, for this you are here, it is really a shame. And it's really, and I feel very bad. I had, you said once for some minutes that I was very strong, very sever. Yeah, I, in these 19 years, I didn't get this in English. I don't know how to say this. Per, 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 in English, nobody is per you, but in uh, German, in, uh, it, in the first name terms, in the yeah. first name, la per tu, no? in the first name terms. I didn't get in la per tu with anybody. I never went out after performances with singers eating, drinking, because then you promise a lot of things, but you never would. Never would. Yeah. And so I went at home and I came in the morning, so I didn't like it at nine o'clock to be no, This is a Russian, Soviet, Romanian, communist uh, system. In the morning you have to work, and the night you have to sleep, and you have to eat the middle and not to drink on the evening. Not so bad, not so bad, but unusual for them. But slowly they, they get it. So the mistakes, cardinal mistakes, I, I don't regret anything. Yes, the most, uh, some stage directors I Hire. where I would be happy that they, I wouldn't take them. But once you're here and they work and you spend also money with them, you cannot change it more. I think 19 years is a lot. It was, it is also a political dependence what you have here with the premier minister. Austria is a small country. Austria, some people in America stay in the Habsburg residence. Yes, the house is too big for the country. The country is unimportant. They, what they have, they have the snow. Mm -hmm. This is also now a little problem because it gets more yeah. warmer. Global they warming. Have, yeah. They have the snow. They have the Vienna Philharmonic, the best orchestra from the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have the Salzburg Festival, yeah. which they think is the best from the world. Uh, I think it is one of the festivals, but another story. <laughs> and they have the Staatsoper reconstructed 55. And for instance, visitation from the house, they, people pay as tours. It's yeah. a tour Just to visit how the place looks from inside. Oh, yeah. It looks from inside, yeah. 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 And I see yeah. this is the best story. The house is here, you don't have to pay anything. You pay one lady to tell them what. And I went to listen what they say and what they told them. And in the 26th March, 545, 
The Americans bombed the Staatsoper, and so it was finished. The Americans bombed the Staatsoper. What people can say, young people? Ah, these dreadful Americans. Why the Americans bombed the Staatsoper? Was a part of Germany, as Austria was a part of Ostmark. And so the Americans helped bombing all what they could bomb, of course, to change the things for me. They didn't like it so much. They said, now this comes with Romanian and changes also the text, what they are saying by the Turings. He cares about all. He cares about the paper in the toilets. This horrendous. Yes, all is the house. All what is, what happens in this building is my responsibility. And I wish and I want that, that it should be as I think that it should be. And more or less it should be as it was in Timisoara. Okay. Self-discipline, attention to detail, a great knowledge of the, of the scores of the opera life in general, a, a uh, permanent attention to everything that's, uh, that's going on and the willingness to make changes despite the culture of the place have indeed made a, a great tenure as general manager. Of yeah. course, Romania uh, is a country that needs to be better known in the world and somebody of your stature, of your experience, of your reputation can be very instrumental in making us better known throughout the world. And you have, you have been involved in several projects concerning our reputation, our image throughout, throughout the world and the promotion of our culture. What do you think we should do better or differently when it comes to cultural promotion, national promotion, all these aspects that are very important in in contemporary world. If the first thing would be, should be, and it wouldn't be, that the world knows that the Romanians, which are known in all the world, are Romanians. That when I am in Chicago, in the museum, and I see the sculpture Brancusch, and, and it is written Brancusch, and I ask them, what is this? This is Brancusi. Uh, I say, ah, Brancusi, I heard. Yeah, it's a very important French sculpture. French sculpture, Brancusi. Brancusch a nostru, in Dergozil, is a Brancusi, because they don't say it is a Romanian artist. Choran is a Romanian writer in Paris. No, it is a French writer. Eliade, which was in America, a religious teacher, is Romanian. Also, they are not Celan. Celan is a big poet. Yep. Romanian. Ionesco, Ionescu is Romanian. And now it comes the story with O. Singers go away and they changes, they occidentalizes their name. Mm. Westernize their name, make them sound more uh, Western, more English. Then they are more accepted. Mm. This would be the, this is the first thing. I don't speak for a nationalism, but mm. stay Romanian and stay with your name Romanian and don't say Mariana Nicolescu, Mariana Nicolescu it is. And also, if in French the O is a U or the U is a O, normally you have to keep your name. You have we have fantastic ballerines. We have also we are should Hertha Miller. Hertha Miller, which comes from a village very near to Timisoara, is a, she gives the Nobel Prize. In Romania, they don't know. In Romania, we don't know the big Romanians with. Joran was interdicted from the communists. Okay, they are away, 1689. Where is Joran today? As a, this would be the most important because the reality is, and uh, please now don't say that I'm exaggerating, this Romanian nation is something very special. It's a mixture between, between the Byzantinism and it was occupied from the Turkish and it was the Slav influence. 
gives a nation which is the Balkan is a geographical thing, but we have nothing to do with Poland, with uh, Czechoslovakia, with Hungary. Romania is Romania. It is a mixed tool, but it's a very good mixture. Maestro Johan Hollander, it's been a true honor to spend some time with you and also to be able to, to have this uh, conversation. Thank you again for having accepted our uh, invitation and being part of the Ferraru uh, conferences. I'm sure the viewers have learned a lot about what it means to be truly successful in a, in a tough world of, of opera, of artistic life. Well, what it means to, to be successful in life itself coming from a situation that was far from, from very promising and also making it big in the, in the Western world, in America, everywhere. I thank you again for, for being part of this program. And for the viewers, I thank you for being loyal to our online programs, even though our events now take place in person more and more. We are in favor of a hybrid cultural diplomacy, so our online programs will go on in parallel with our in-person program. Uh, thank you, Maestro. Thank you. I thank you very much, if you permit me. And I learned also a lot of things. First of all, I learned now, and I know who is Leon Ferraro. This is the first important experience for today. And the second one that I learned in you, and you see, this is a Romanian reporter, Romanian diplomat. You can speak how to ask, how to ask to get a question. You are very good prepared about my life, about things which I did. You knew more about me as myself knew about me. <laughs> and I hope, I hope in this life, in this not so long life which I have for me, but let's hope that we meet also personally once more in New York or somewhere else. Thank you thank for you. the kind words. I, thank you for the patience. And thank you for your understandable, uh, for understanding for my Romanian English. <laughs> no, thank you for your kind words. And now, because we are, of course, online and so many viewers are seeing us, it's a promise that we will invite you to New York to meet your admirers here at the Romanian Cultural Institute in New York. And it's a public promise we make. Thank you. Obrigado. <laughs> thank you.